It says we're live. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tesla Live, episode 7 for May 17th, 2017. My name, which you can't read down here because I don't have a lower third. I don't know why. I'm feeling a little insecure about it, so... You know, kind of go with me this week. My name is Russell Frost. I am the, uh, um, uh, I guess I'm the host. I just get to wave the baton. That's about it. I don't do much else. But luckily, I have three amazing experts here with me this week that are going to have lower thirds and have names, which you won't even have to remember because they'll be on their screen. And they know a lot more about this stuff than I do. So let's introduce them and get them going. Of course, my partner in crime on the Tesla life. Uh... It's Mr. Mark Coughlin. I swear Tony's t-shirt just changed color. <laughs> <laughs> Is that me? Oh, wow. Mark, anything, hi. Any, anything can happen on this show. Anything. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, and I'm losing my voice, so I'm going to struggle through this, but uh, my voice kind of is breaking up today for whatever reason. It's about time you went through puberty, Mark. I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> Thank you. Thank idea. you so much. I'm, yes. I'm so, so proud of you. <laughs> Yeah, your wife and your daughters are going to be so so very happy to know. Yes, they will. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we'll try and keep your participation minimal, which is ridiculous because you have like five stories this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fate! You cruel, cruel thing, you. Uh, speaking of cruel things, uh, our friend in Chicago, uh, he has the color changing shirt. Apparently, his name is Tony Schaefer. I didn't do anything. I did change the bottom third. Oh, that's probably what you saw. I think I changed oh, the color okay. my to match the other two since they were there first. They were red, and the Tesla Life logo was red. So why not? There you go. Right. Well, but hi, everybody. Just saying that. Oh, yeah. Hi. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for coming on, Tony. It's awesome yeah. to have you. And, of course, uh, we've crawled through his wife's Model X We've uh, teased him about running his Model S out of juice completely. He is mm -hmm. the man with two Teslas in his garage and two more on reservation, Dr. Evan Fusco. Hello, everybody. Good to be back. Well, it's nice to have you here, Evan. Thanks. Nice to have you here. I guess we could just get into the news and sort of dive in that way. So uh, let's go back to the guy who doesn't really have a voice this week. I'm going to try my best to help Mark if I can, uh, because he's got a great story that we're going to talk about uh, right now. Yeah, it's um, it's an interesting story uh, from Electric. And boy, this is going to be painful, isn't it? Mark, do you want me just to? <laughs> to <play like this? laughs> I, uh, I don't even know why I rushed to be on the show today because it's just yeah. falling apart. It sounds it oh, sounds painful. Oh my gosh! So, well, Electric uh, has uh, talked about uh, Mr. Jeff uh, Dehan, uh, who works for Nova Scotia University and also works for Tesla. Um, he has discovered he's he's been in. A, uh, a year uh, internship currently with Tesla, and he's got another, I believe he's, he's signed on for a five-year term or four-year term. And uh, his mandate was to improve the batteries uh, in the uh, Tesla cars. And he, uh, in one year into his term, uh, has uh, announced uh, through a, uh, a, a talk uh, at a seminar for a battery seminar in March, that he has discovered a way to lengthen uh, the longevity of the Tesla batteries by a factor of two. So he has doubled the battery lifetime uh, for a cell. And he also indicated in the article that he has uh, taken that information and they have actually started to implement this into uh, the the process of creating batteries. So it, it sounds like from his uh, discussion that not only has he found uh, this, this groundbreaking um, modification, but they've already started to put it into practice, which is shocking uh, that uh, he's been able to do this uh, so quickly. He, of, of course, is a, is a renowned battery researcher and has been, uh, you know, that, that's his, what he does um, and most likely why Tesla picked him up. But uh, very interesting that uh, this uh, Nova Scotia uh, University uh, professor uh, has been able to uh, 
pull this off in such quick measure. Was that a subtle slap against the Maritimes? <laughs> no, that's that's a feather in their cap. I that see. Is, okay. Okay. Yes. I just didn't yes. Know why. I, I mean, this is sort of the natural extension of when a company goes, and I hate to, pardon me for the poker term, but when a company goes all in on something and, you know, as Tesla has with battery production, not being satisfied to, to buy batteries from somebody else to make their own, mm. um, you know, I mean, this is sort of the, the, the rewards that they reap for that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I got to say one of the things that I, I found most interesting about the, the article, I mean, I guess the the funniest, you know, if funny, paha, maybe, is that the discovery was not predicated on, you know, necessarily just jumping in and tinkering with battery composition or chemistry or, or whatever. But uh, the first thing they, they decided they needed to do was build a device so they could better, more accurately test the degradation of batteries. So they built this device and they started testing batteries and the device does such a great job of testing the, ba the batteries that they were able to identify exactly what uh, the, the anode, I think it was, that was causing the degradation. And they ended up um, like replacing it with an aluminum something. And like that was one of the breakthroughs, like right there. And it was like, oh, well, if we just change this, then it, it now lasts twice as long. Okay, we're done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, nickel cobalt aluminum oxide. It's NCA for short. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I had it. I do, and and also the fact that, that he he says pretty clearly that um, yeah he he and um, he doesn't claim that he understands perfectly the chemistry behind the degradation, but the machines they developed enabled them to test new chemistries, and. Um, so I think it's kind of funny. They they did this, and then you know even the guy leading the research was like, "Yeah, I don't really claim to understand it. <laughs> it just works, right?" Yep. But sometimes empirical discoveries like that are every bit as valid. You know what I mean? Like they may oh, not yeah, understand yeah. it, but they've tested it and they've mm -hmm. created a hypothesis and they adjusted it, and it works better. So definitely, you know, definitely. I, I, the only thing I wanted to add is this update that you may or may not have been able to read on the screen if you're watching the webcast. Is it said uh, that uh, Don reached out to clarify that the cells in question were tested in the lab and they were not in Tesla products yet. So, Correct. But certainly, you got to think they're going to start slapping those things in some test mules somewhere and see what they'll do. Yeah. Well, and again, Tesla controls that part of the production, so they can put these cells into the cars whenever they want, whenever they're ready. You know, it's not like they have to wait for Panasonic to finish out a run of 500,000 other things. Right. Uh, right. And it does give them a much uh, better opportunity to um, create small batch, you know, small batches, swap out the existing ones and, uh, and, and do that and not have to impact a production run. Um, especially if you consider, oh, by the way, who are the first Model 3s going to? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you want to you want to test out some um, some beta product. You have a whole bunch of employees driving your cars. You saying you know? captive audience? Captive. Yeah, yeah, something like. I mean, that. this story stands out to me um, amongst the plethora of battery news we seem to hear every other week. In that, a this is a guy that's worked and apparently is still working with uh, Tesla directly. And and as Tony pointed out, developed this machine to test them. And you know, I, I think that's what Elon said all along that he wants. You know, stories about battery improvements are one thing. Put one in my hands, let me test it in a car, and, and you've you've got something. You know, and and uh, it sounds like he's. This is pretty close to that step that uh, that they really want to see. That it's got it's near ready for application testing. Absolutely. And as a, as a public service announcement, uh, I just thought I'd, I'd ask, how much are you charging for that lease space, Tony? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on what you're willing to pay. <laughs> I think Russell's willing to pay a lot because he doesn't have his own. <laughs> I don't know. And Evan, can we be clear? Is this your reservation? Refer your referral? Yeah, my referral code there is we go. on there. So do you know when, when Evan is on the screen, that is his referral URL. If you want to buy a Tesla, use that link. Save a thousand dollars. Yeah, Evan can hook you up and put a grant in your back in your pocket. 
So uh, right. just to be clear what that is. Well, uh, speaking of evidence, speaking of uh, uh uh, new developments that may or may not be so good. Evan has a little bit of news about a related company. Right. So, I, you know, a little bit of background. It, it kind of sounded like a joke. Uh, what, maybe two, three months ago, Elon tweeted something out that he was going to build a machine that was going to bore tunnels so that he could get through LA faster. Everybody chuckled. <laughs> and then, like, two days later, said, No, really, I'm going to do this. And, and then, like, a month later, he's got a boring machine and he started drilling tunnels under LA that he intends to drive cars through for traffic. But not only do they intend to drive cars through, but he's uh, released this video showing uh, basically a sled that you pull your car up onto and the sled goes down into the tunnel uh, via some elevator system or some other merging system and jumps on a high speed track and travels 125 miles an hour um, obviously with zero risk of crashing because, you know, this is all controlled on the, the track um, and zipping under L.A. until you get to your destination and you raise back up and off you go. Um, and it's cool sounding. I mean, I think it would be fun to zip at 125 miles an hour through a tunnel on your car. But uh, the article that, that we've got uh, out today came out on a uh, web page called Curbed uh, by Alyssa Walker. And uh, she's saying that this idea is surprisingly outdated and surprisingly bad and makes a pretty compelling argument that it doesn't really solve a lot of the problems that truly lead to congestion. Um, at uh, one point, uh, they, they posted a uh, cartoon uh, in the article that mm -hmm. kind of shows, uh, you know, what can happen. You know, you, you widen the highway, everybody begs for the widened highway, and then suddenly the widened highway is not any better than than the uh, previous one was. Um, and, and I think that's right. You know, you've still got tra issues of how do you get all that traffic merged down into this 125 mile an hour tunnel? And then how do you take it out of that 125 yeah. mile an hour tunnel? Um, so and what we, end up with, we end up with a line for the elevator. Right. And their, their other concern is that, you know, because this is such a bad idea, but it sounds so cool and fancy, it sort of distracts people from focusing on, real world solutions that do have impact, uh, such as, you know, trains, light rail trains and other ways to move the public in a more energy efficient, faster, cleaner, um, uh, and less expensive manner than, than this. Cause you know, uh, supposedly you'd have to pay for every ride on the sled through the tunnel. And I, it's just a little bit hard unless you're just making this for the elite, um, so that they can get where they want to go faster. You're not really solving the public, the problems of public transportation and congestion in the cities. Yeah, um, I completely agree. And you all know I'm, I'm a huge fan of mass transportation. So, yeah, you know, in the, I mean, the one thing is you see the above ground, the streets are, you know, completely congested. And then you drop below ground, first of all, you're in a tunnel that has a 100 foot ceiling, you know, I mean, what the hell? And then, you know, there's only five or six cars in the tunnel. Like, really? Yeah. You know, like Mark said, you know, you basically, you know, after that one drops down, you're going to have a line of other cars waiting. So, you know, you have a line at the elevator. I almost, you know, like, I almost want to say that Elon's just having fun with us. You know what I mean? The boring Except company. he bought the equipment yeah. and he's digging already. It's his sense of humor, and I get it. It's the boring company, but it's not boring. It's exciting. But honestly, the but, solution to, ca to car congestion right. isn't cars. Right. And that's the problem. Right. And, and, but, and look, they, even... Even if or when he admits that this is not a good idea, the boring company piece still has potential application for uh, the uh, uh, what was that the hyper uh, hyperloop uh, hyperloop and oh, um, you know and other uh, you know tunneling applications if they can get that thing to work the way he says where it's twice as fast and and half the cost uh, that's that's a pretty uh, massive improvement in the current tunneling technology um, but we'll see you know I mean. I think we've all learned not to underestimate 
Elon Absolutely. Musk. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, he's had failures and they're notable and this appears to be one that's yeah. destined to be one yeah. of I mean, if, if you if you really want to fix something you know like like that then what you do is yeah you you hyperloop somewhere and then you have a bus a <laughs> series of buses waiting at the other end all the passengers enter in where they need to go the autonomous bus automatically calculates the most efficient route drops everybody off and then comes back for the next batch yeah i, I mean I, Here's as someone who lived in LA for a while, the idea of boring a hole between Sherman Oaks and Lax, that's great. That's cool. Because nobody wants to be on that stretch of the 405. No one ever wants to be on that stretch of the 405. It's awful all the time. But nobody wants to arrive at Lax with their car. No one does. Because then you've got to park the damn thing and you got to pay for it. They want it, they want to be dropped off at the front door of Lax. That's what they want. No mm -hmm. one wants their car there. Um, and and the same again, you know, for, for going home, like, oh, great. After I've spent $500 to store my car here for five days or whatever it is, you know, then you're going to get jump your, back on the 405. Yeah, you're going to jump back on the 405 and spend the rest of your day there. This is a bad idea. And the problem is technology isn't always the answer to our problems. The tunnel is an interesting idea because... In a lot of our cities, and LA is a wonderful example of a big sprawling city where you don't have right away access to built above ground light rail. So the, 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 the no brainer solution here is to put light rail in those tunnels. Subways are amazingly efficient solutions that have worked in many cities all over the globe for, dare I suggest, over a century. I know it's not sexy and it's not cool. Maybe we can paint them some fun color or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know, we don't need a hyperloop and we don't need sleds. What we need is that access, that tunnel, with some reasonably dependable uh, uh, means of moving from point A to point B. The, the hyperloop is silly because it's cool. Don't get me wrong. It's cool to go from San Francisco to LA in seven and a half minutes or whatever it is. Assuming you don't get killed. You know what I mean? Like, right. but. It, you don't have to, you know what, if you get from San Francisco to LA in an hour, in two hours, nonstop, that's killer. That's, an, that's a, a huge improvement. And we have the technology right now, nothing crazy, nothing weird, nothing expensive to do that. But we're not doing it because we're kind of chasing these shiny things. And that's the frustrating right. part about this. Right. But yeah. You know, it, you um, build the subway tunnel, put the subway, you know, you, you build the cars, you put the solar panels on top of the, the solar uh, the solar panels on, on top of the subway buses, um, trains, and they power themselves. Does that work? There could be a problem with that. There could, <laughs> yeah, there could be. Yeah. Well, yes, of course. I know that was a, that was a stupid. You're being facetious, aren't you, Tony? I am. I really am. Well, uh, let's uh, go back to the man with no voice. One for more the next time. news story. One more time. Do you, yes. you want me? If you need help, Mark, just yell. All right. Um, he can't yell, or he would. I, I can't uh, yell, or I'd be able to no, talk. <laughs> um, the next story is about the gross margin for the Model 3 and how this could be a real game changer uh, for uh, Tesla as a company. Uh, currently, as, as many know, the Model S uh, gets about a 30% profit margin on the sale of their cars. Elon Musk and the group have uh, publicly stated that they would, do believe they're going to be able to achieve a 25% gross margin um, compared to the <clears throat> excuse me compared to the Model S on the Model 3. So <clears throat> with that type of a um, a gross margin, that is typically on the higher scale of car manufacturers. So it'll be interesting to see that if they get uh, people uh, who are purchasing the cars and they're putting extra options on it and pushing that gross profit up as as they add items to their cars, that's certainly going to help them contribute to that twenty five percent, which is which is their their uh, particular that's their plan at this point, and um, it's going to be interesting to see if the plan uh, pans out with the new Model Three buyers. So. Uh, I wanted to turn it over to the panel to say, is 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 this likely? Uh, do we believe that uh, there are, those type of margins are obtainable uh, with a new type of person buying a Tesla? 
Yeah. I, I, Can I, any of us know? Yeah, I, I have no idea. I, I just don't have the technical inside knowledge to even take a guess whether that's real. I it's, just, you know, I, I think, you know, when, when, you, when you're looking at people buying cars, and, and we've, we've said this several times, that for most people, a car is an appliance. Um, and, you know, even having a cool, sexy, you know, Model 3 that's, you know, $35,000, you know, base. Some, somebody is, you know, there's going to be people out there saying, well, I can get a Camry for twenty five, and I'm fine with that. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, at what point, if, if Tesla really is making 30% gross margin, does, does that mean they have room to lower the price without cutting into the actual cost of the car? They just reduce their margin and become more market competitive. I mean, is that, would that be an option down the road that, um, or, or they add more bells and feet and, you know, bells, whistles and features and not raise the price and now give people more for their, um, you know, for their dollar. Sure. I, I got to believe with volume, those type of things will start to play on them. They will, they will start to add those type of things, either adding features or reducing costs as they recently did with um, a battery upgrade for some of the cars. So there is some talk about this. Uh, I don't know if that eats into their 30% current profit margin on a Model S or not, but um, as to whether or not it it is something that uh, they are they are trying to do to entice people uh, to get out of a certain battery pack. That that could be the case as well. This is one of the things that I have a problem with in financial press. Um, oftentimes we get an analyst, and in this case, um, what is that? Uh, George Galliers. Uh, he's Evercore ISI analyst, George Galliers. And I don't, I'm not familiar with uh, Mr. Galliers. Uh, he may be an excellent analyst. He may be a crackpot because some of these analysts are definitely crackpots. Um, and they're not so you're right seeking alpha. I, I know, I know, but they're not right very often. Is is really my my uh, my issue? So, uh, you know, I don't know what what his record is. Maybe he's really, you know, maybe he's really on it, and he's got an excellent point. Maybe he's just blowing smoke, and we don't really have any way of checking this. I, I do think it's an interesting thing if you look at like what Apple's done with their products and not reducing the price, but increasing what the consumer gets with new model iteration yeah. and then lowering the price on the older model to mm. make it more appealing. Um, that seems to be a paradigm of sorts that maybe Tesla might be following. You know, we don't know yet, you know, that's going to be a few years before we can figure that out, but it, it's something to look at. And um, I, this is a fascinating conversation. I mean, if Tesla can make 25% on a model three, that's a pretty, <laughs> That's a pretty impressive achievement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think we I, just I, lost I, Mark. We yeah, need I to send. We need to send emergency medical care to Mark. <laughs> so I mentioned the uh, the Camry. So I decided to you know just follow through with that example. What I found, um, you know, just real quick searching. One reference said that on the um, twenty three twenty three thousand nine hundred and five dollar. Uh, Camry LE, the guess best guess is a two thousand dollar gross market, uh, gross um, profit margin. margin. Yeah, whatever. I'm I'm so um, you know that comes out to what that's like less than a percent. Yeah. Is it one percent? Less than ten percent? Less than ten percent. It's less than ten. So we're looking at a forty five thousand dollar car. Let's say after you know add ons. Um, if you're making thirty percent on that. What is that? Twelve thousand five hundred or more in gross margin. Yeah, <clears throat> but that it's the thirty is on the current S, they believe, and the twenty-five is what they're saying will be on the Model Three, hopefully. On the okay. right. Okay, so so twenty-five, so so. 10, around ten thousand. If they're they yeah. get their estimated, right? Uh, right. What forty-two thousand uh, average sale price. 
And I guess, you know, it's, it's, if they feel the market can, can bear that, if people are willing to pay that to the tune of, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, then um, the market comes off of, um, you know, it, it's a Tesla and people are willing to pay it. You know, every time, every time Apple, what I'm getting at is every time Apple comes out with a new phone, um, I fix it or whoever tears it down and they price out all the parts and they say, your $700 iPhone only costs $350. That's not a, I fix it tears it apart, but they don't do those those cost oh. analysis done by a company similar to this, and that company is equally awful. Yeah, um, but so so I mean that's what they try to do. They try to say you know oh fifty percent of what you paid was profit to Apple, right. Right. but we know there's much more that goes into it. I mean we just talked about Tesla's batteries. How much money are they spending in battery tech that that they need to recoup somehow? Yeah, yeah, right. or building a factory in Nevada. Well, and then, yeah, right, you get into the whole cost accounting thing and what goes into the cost of the car, you know, what, right, and that that's, I'm sorry, my eyes start glazing over when I get into those conversations. Right, right, right. Well, speaking of eyes glazing over, uh, I, I, interestingly enough, I ran into an article that really fascinated me, and, you know, again, I, I'm not necessarily the math guy here. I think that's somebody else. Uh, but uh, Insight EVs had uh, another, oh, geez, another market analyst prediction. Um, Morgan Stanley, uh, an analyst uh, named Adam Jonas from uh, Morgan Stanley, has some issues with Tesla's predictions of what they're going to deliver. So just to be clear, uh, Tesla is saying that deliveries for the Model 3 in 2017 should be in the five digit range. Now that's about as mathematically vague as you can literally make a statement without saying somewhere <laughs> between one and a million. So somewhere between roughly 9,999 and 99,999. Right. Yeah. In 2017 and in the six digit range in 2018. Um, Jonas of Morgan Stanley disagrees. Um, he thinks that uh, the deliveries are going to be substantially less. And uh, while the market is looking for Tesla to fulfill the predictions it's made, um, he's looking at, as opposed to um, uh, a five digit, so 10 to, to 100,000, he's looking at maybe 2,000 cars being delivered in 2017 and maybe 90,000 delivered in 2018. Here's the thing from my perspective. I don't know that 2,000 and 90,000 would be a would be like a fail for Tesla. I understand it would be less numbers than what they predicted. And I get that. From that perspective it it would be disappointing, but honestly, if they can do what they've done with Model 3 and deliver that many good working cars of high quality, I would have to consider that would be a victory. Now, in 2019, those deliveries have got to shoot up. Yeah. What do you guys think? Well, not, it might be a, a, a talk. A, <laughs> it might be a, a moral victory for uh, uh, fans and enthusiasts. I'm, I think it would be. A loss for those who have invested heavily and are anticipating uh, much bigger numbers. Um, yeah, I don't know. Ten thousand from January or from July to December. Yeah, two thousand. Well, I mean, yeah, if they got into the five digit. I think they'll get more than two thousand. I, I I think the the way that they're tooling this car is going to facilitate mm -hmm. that. It's not going to be a hand-built thing, even from the start, I don't believe. So I think they'll get more than that. But, yeah, they're going to have line stoppages and retoolings yeah. and stuff as they go, probably. You, you know, and you, you said about as mathematically vague as you can get. Well, hold my beer, because I think <laughs> he's, he's – um, I think um, – wait, was it a he? Yes, Adam yeah. Jonas. Oh, Adam, Adam, Adam Jonas from. Uh, yeah. well, I think Stanley. I think he's overly pessimistic, and I think Elon's overly optimistic. So there's my my vague. Uh, <laughs> the truth is in the middle. Yeah. Wow. I, I mean, wow. I really do because because I really do think that, um, you know, once the machines get running, they're just going to run them, and the machines are going to be able to run relatively quickly. 
But I do agree with Evan. There's going to be line stoppage. There's going to be some fine tuning and some tweaking. But I honestly think that between the line stoppage and the tweaking, some cars are going to be manufactured. And I think it, it could be a good deal, um, you know, a good number of cars. Um, and then I do think next year, once all the little quirks and everything's figured out, and you can run the machines 24 hours a day, multiple lines, then yeah, a hundred thousand could be achievable. I, I wonder how much short stock more. <laughs> Russell, are you there? Uh oh, uh oh, oh. We lost Russell. <laughs> oh. Not good, and he's driving the sh the car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny, and that's oh a man, that is not good. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, I guess we'll wait for Russell to reconnect. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Tony, dance Ooh. to entertain the fans. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, <laughs> I've got another story we can discuss. Yeah. We'll wait for Russell to show up. Right. Right. Um, the the newest um, uh, release candidate was spotted recently uh, on the roads uh, around. Uh, Tesla HQ, and uh, the silver one has appeared, and it sparked some controversy. So I've got a picture showing of the the uh, car, um, and there's a few shots uh, that, as you can see, it's just being stocked. Like I, I can't imagine <laughs> these guys trying to do their jobs now. Like like people yeah. are sitting outside of the, the company headquarters with you know camera gear, waiting for anything to move. So. Mm -hmm. So these cars roll out. What was interesting was that some of the body panels on the car on this particular model uh, with the same license plate uh, were somewhat misaligned on the front quarter. And people were a little bit, and you can't really tell from this particular photo, but up on the front quarter, there was an issue where it was a bit misaligned uh, with, uh, with the door and the hood. Um, now, this, of course, is to be expected. Uh, I would think that, uh, you know, these many of these release candidates are probably bolted and rebolted together, yes. trying to test things as they're rolling out. And then they come back and they're on, you know, they're, they're taken apart again and another panel's put on. And uh, I imagine that these type of things are, are quite common. Um, so uh, I, I don't think this has anything to do with the quality of the car or what you should be concerned about these uh, these cars are designed for testing and strictly testing so those type of changes would certainly be in play uh, throughout throughout all of the release candidates I would believe uh, I think you're absolutely right that I mean people are looking for anything to talk about at, at this point and uh, you know uh, that that's stuff that'll be fixed later that's that's fine-tuning last minute stuff right now they're slapping stuff in there testing mm -hmm. like you say pulling out retesting let's see we have russell sent a text it says power drop <laughs> waiting for modem to reset <laughs> but i say when he comes back on we all just freeze <laughs> the mannequin challenge <laughs> <laughs> oh man talk about talk about sabotage yeah terrible. yeah, yeah. Terrible. But I, um, yeah, looking at these pictures, uh, I have to say, that, you know, I, I really do like the um, the look, of course. Um, I mean, that's just, to me, that's just sleek elegance. Yeah. Just that roof line back, uh, just a teardrop. It really, it back. really is out of the ballpark, isn't it, for, for yeah. a sedan yeah. like that? I do have to ask, and I don't know if there's 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 got to be a reason behind everything, but what's the um, the port above the front? will that is the tesla logo as well as a hidden uh, camera is located there so one of the viewer really? cameras is is on the front quarter is that what you're talking about near the front wheel yeah the black spot the triangle the triangle yeah yeah, yeah that's it yeah the turn indicator and then look if you look at the b pillar as well um you can see kind of a on one of those pictures at least it showed there's kind of a vague circle in the middle of that thing and that's the uh oh, another one of the the cameras hmm, okay 
and actually uh, even those those camera locations even have some sort of a heat source in them so when the car is in winter conditions or up here with me in Canada um, the the car will defrost that uh, space and allow the camera still to be uh, sh uh, shown through it although I had spoken to a Tesla owner here today uh, I was at an event in Toronto uh, this morning and the Tesla owner was a little bit concerned that a heat source would basically uh, crystallize uh, the salt content from the the water or the the snow that was on it and and ultimately block vision as well so um, it's 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 going to be interesting to see if these type of things happen or not yeah I, I'm, I'm skeptical you know, it, the the one time I drove in really bad winter conditions the snow was, and ice were so deeply caked on the the front of the car that I couldn't even use the cruise control because um, uh, the sensors for that were totally uh -huh. blocked up and, um, and it, it, yeah, it was it was useless so and then there ain't no little heat coil in there that's gonna not melt all that stuff off of there right it's already uh, you know 10 degrees Fahrenheit so Evan is there a like an old-school manual cruise that you can use um, no no, it's either well, auto cruise so, or nothing. Yeah, it was kind of interesting because you know, I, I, you you gradually lost functionality depending on how much stuff was blocked up. Um, yeah. And um, initially, I had like nothing at all uh, that I that I could use. And then eventually, the the windshield like melted, and the uh, front view camera was exposed. And I I think I got most of the autopilot functionality there for a bit. But then the 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 little sensors that are on the bumper, those got so right. caked with ice and stuff that um, it could no longer detect the um, the lines on the road and the curbs and stuff. So I lost autopilot and still had, but it still had regular cruise control. But at some point, everything got caked up, and I mean it was completely covered in, in snow, and I had nothing. It was Did, just were, were you were you still able? Um, had you maintained the capability to manipulate the accelerator pedal <laughs> manually? <laughs> My ankle got really tired, though, Tony. Did, did, did you have to retrain your foot and your hands how to actually control a car? I, you're supposed to. I had my son get on the floor and control the accelerator. <laughs> Hiding on the phone. Push, yes. Push. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't sure yeah. how that worked anymore. Right. That's the broomstick option that you add to the Tesla. <laughs> yes. So there is one one little one little aside here on this. Um, this picture, the the main picture of the uh, the silver uh, release candidate. If you look far over on the right side of the picture, because this picture was taken at the Tesla headquarters, you can see the windshield of a yellow or an orange Sportster in what looks like the back brake light of a red sports. Um, sports oh, yeah. an orange yeah. Roadster. Roadster. There we go. Yeah, Roadster. So yeah, I, I think this is in or very near the Tesla yeah. test. You know. Yeah, you can actually see the Roadster is parked in their um, yeah. in their park. That's that's Palo Alto, isn't it? It said in the um, in the article that it was at Tesla's headquarters. Yeah, it didn't say. Yeah, where. that's where. Palo. That's not Fremont. Yeah. That's Palo Alto. No. Okay. Okay. That's what it looks like. And there was there was another picture uh, of the car, and we don't have it in this particular article. But there was an, a further picture that showed the roadsters more clearly, uh, mm. kind of an elevated shot, probably from the bank of photographers that have set up on this corner. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to. Can you imagine oh, three paparazzi? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Just just hovering around Tesla buildings all over. I mean, how did they figure out that they shipped a hundred Model Threes to Ohio? Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, like who called in on that one? Holy that shit! That fact, loading on. I'm sorry. That it's Is rumored at this point it's no one has come up with the actual video evidence of those cars i've seen yes. one picture of one model three at a supercharger in cincinnati yeah like, in a rainstorm right yeah in a rainstorm that yeah. that was it but apparently they've got a testing facility outside of columbus and yeah. there has been talk about on the tesla motor forum uh forums that uh they have seen a number of transports that are rolling in and out 
and uh, some people that work at the facility have collaborated some information. Huh. Very cool. Right. Yeah, right on. I mean, you know, we've made fun of people testing secret cars in Los Angeles before. So if Tesla's actually going to ship cars to Ohio, right on. I mean, good for them. Right, you right. Know? Make, make these car spy people actually fly to the Midwest to do so. There something. you go. Oh, that's yeah. hilarious. Yeah, yeah. You know, not I, just drive out to Mojave. Do you think they, they put them in Ohio just so they can, like, drive up to Detroit and troll the big <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's going to be there's going to be a few shots in the future of uh, of a certain car outside of GM headquarters and, yeah, and, and a certain skyline. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine what kind of troll it is? That like thirty Model Threes just circle the Renaissance <laughs> all day long, <laughs> silently circling. Oh yeah, and with their new batteries, we can do this all day. Right. <laughs> I'm waiting for the shots of them driving up into the GM headquarters and parking at the charge spots right outside of corporate headquarters. <laughs> hey, these are open, right? We can use these. <laughs> that's right. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. Hey, I'm sorry, my uh, my power dropped, so I missed something. Uh, and is this the first or the second show? Uh, Model 3 story. The, uh, it is the first. Just first. We haven't done the, the body in white yet. Correct. Uh -oh. oh, there we go. There we go. Sorry. Uh, okay. So, are we going? Do we want to talk about this frame? This naked Model Three. Yeah. Yeah, and this bow, was this bow, was just bow, released. Bow, wow. This <laughs> point is the porno music. Uh, this was <laughs> released just by Tesla recently, and apparently is one of the first, if not the only, uh, Tesla officially released photos of the frame itself uh, in, um, in a release, a model release uh, candidate. So they put this uh, on the web uh, just last week or partway through the week. And um, again, it's, it's, it's fairly distinct uh, based on the cutouts uh, that are shown, uh, but uh, interesting uh, adding uh, again uh, to some speculation as to how the car is being put together. It looks sexy. I like it. Yeah, but, that's uh, yeah. It's it's interesting to see that uh, a lot of people have you know just from this this chassis picture uh, have um, understood uh, some of the architecture of the car, uh, and I don't know if they they know what they're talking about or not. Uh, but it's uh, people have really dived into this uh, quite deep just based on the photo. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure that an engineer could look at this and, and see meaningful things. I look at it and go, "That looks cool." I, mean, I, don't, I don't, I don't know that. It I would look better any... with some wheels. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and axles maybe, and motors, and things like that. You know, I do. The one, I guess, the realization I get from this, and I don't know if it's it's a great observation or not, is that it looks like the trunk space of the Model Three is very, very tiny. It does look pretty small. Okay, so that's not just me. I mean, I'm looking at like a tiny, tiny little trunk. And it's, it's funny because this article actually, or uh, a follow-up to this article actually mentioned that they believe from this photo, uh, they can see that the trunk opening is going to be much larger than what was shown to us uh, a year ago uh, at the launch or the, you know, the pre-launch. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, so they, just by looking at this, and I'm assuming it's something to do with the uh, frame cut uh, partway yes. up the C-pillar. Right. that people are understanding that that means that the trunk is going to open uh, a lot wider than what was uh, previously there. Right, and not just yeah. not just the uh, the seam, like you said, halfway up the, the C-pillar, but then if you look down the back, it, it looks like it, it goes all, all the way down to the bumper. So if the trunk mm -hmm. opening is from the bottom of the back window down to there, that's... That's rather that's relatively substantial. And there's the drop mm -hmm. behind the wheel in front of the bumper. I mean, if that's the outline of the trunk, you know, it, it goes in a, a, a decent, maybe enough amount, but then it goes, it looks like it goes really deep. So yeah, it, it might be relatively substan substantial for the size of the car. Yeah. I, the opening, and, and that would make sense. I mean, if you've got a narrow kind of odd trunk, 
to have a large mouth would make that otherwise kind of inconvenient shape more usable. Mm -hmm. Especially if the that's where you're going. Flat. Yeah. Giving you that yeah, access. I, where's the gas tank go? <laughs> no, that was a joke. Just a joke. I think I, I think the gas is 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 um right behind the front bumper. That little space right there. That's that's where the gas tank is. Is that where that goes? Okay. I, I, wonder. I wonder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, Lee Lee Moon wants wants to make sure that we pay attention to the frunk. The frunk. Yeah, Don't well, of course. And yeah, there's no forgetting there is a trunk in the front, a frunk uh, if frunk. you will. Uh, for storage that most vehicles don't have because of the large combustion motors that usually take up that space. Yeah. That, that brings up a, an interesting question. Evan, what do you use your frunks for? Oh. Um, I don't use it on a regular basis for like groceries and things like that. Uh, um, now, so let me back up just a little. So the, the Model S, I have the oldest style, and it had, they called like it the microwave. There was a, a, a part that set back, and I actually have a really nice uh, Tesla case that fits perfectly in that little spot. And in there, I keep a tire repair kit and a blanket and some gloves and like emergency stuff like that. And it just stays in there per permanently 100% of the time. Certainly when we're moving a bunch of stuff and I need storage room, I'll open that frunk and I'll put extra stuff in there. But it's not quite as accessible you know you actually have to lift it up with your hands it doesn't have an automatic opening um oh but, no oh, automatic oh opener God. i know wow i'm gonna uh, need a moment you, why do you still have uh, i'm just gonna say evil elon geez he can build a hyperloop but he can't put a motorized yeah. front lid <laughs> um but and, and and but actually worse is closing it you actually you have to manually not only close it but like press it down and just so and if you do it wrong you can dent the the metal on the front and so it's just not quite as convenient as using the, the back hatch which you know you can pop from inside the car you can close it from inside the car you can do it with the key fob you can close it with the key fob you can use your hands if you want to use your hands lots and lots of space back there so that's where i use most of my daily quickly moving stuff in and out of it kind of space mm -hmm. um Tamara's uh, got in the model x or she's got the dual motor and and even if you don't have the dual motor and the new the model s um they've got rid of that setback space um and so it's a much narrower spot so if she uses it to keep similar type things ice scraper extra umbrella you know just permanent stuff and then we'll cram stuff in there as well when we need it kind of on more i don't say emergency basis but um, additional storage space basis and and you know part of that reason is that um i I don't know if it's possible on the S, but on the X and the new S, um, there's an emergency release latch uh, that's easy to find, um, and you can get access to the front, so you don't want to keep anything valuable in there anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So anybody could come up and pull that latch and see what you got in there. You know what? That would be a good segment for us to uh, do a live report again. <laughs> Finding that lever and showing us where it is. Yeah, show yeah. everybody. How show that, that on the hood. <laughs> right, right. Here, everyone, visit your favorite Model S owner and take whatever's in their front. Yeah. Highest rated video on YouTube. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Not, not good enough clickbait. Yeah. Well, that's. Um, I think that's our news for this week. Do we have anything else we need to? Uh, Mark, you're good at those eleventh hour. Like, wait, what? There's one more. Story? I was going to add one thing on the front discussion yeah. on the Model Three because I didn't really go back to that. I, you know, I, I thought about that as well. I, I suspect it, with the incredibly shrinking front um, on the the growing models of Model S, I suspect the front on the three is going to be really small. Um, it's a shorter um, mm -hmm. hood to start with. They're going to need space. Uh, reserved for various electronics and then the uh, front motor when the, the all-wheel drive version comes out um, and that slope of that hood is steeper as well so yeah. I, I think that that frunks well I'm sure it'll still be there is going to be much less substantial than anything we've got on the, the current models yeah I um yeah let me, let me see here let me bring this up because I was trying to figure out not only what it would um you know what that frunk would look like but you know if i can if i could share this a frunk would look like oh is that what yeah. everybody wonders what does the frunk so look like? oh. you know if if the steering wheel is about here 
and you're sitting, I'm, I'm figuring your feet are going to be, what, in this area? Well, you, they've got to hit the wheels so you can turn them. <laughs> right, with your foot. Right, that's your brake. It's your manual brake. Right. <laughs> But I'm just I'm just thinking because if that's going to be what would you know the equivalent of the firewall, that really I mean to Evan's point that really doesn't leave a lot of space mm. for frunk, frunkage. That's frunkage. The, the frunkage. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that's that's one thing that I think is missing. Has has anybody seen any pictures of a trunk <clears throat> or frunk? Not that I'm aware. I believe yeah. there was one from that night that they. Uh... They drove them. I'll, I'll have to go and research yeah. that. I think yeah, there was I know one. At, the, at the reveal, they opened it, but that was so far, you know, so long ago. Yeah. And so yeah. many, it wasn't and, even released. And things could have changed by then. Yeah, yeah. But if we just suggest it, I'm sure the paparazzi will be happy to pry open the trunk as it goes yeah, by. I, I mean, what we, what we need to do is show the them that relief that, that <laughs> is. Apparently, according to Evan, it doesn't take much. So I'm guessing like a Swiss <laughs> right. Army knife and maybe a little bit of knowledge and, you know, we're in there. We're getting your survival supplies. So I'm kind of okay with that. Um, anything else, gentlemen? Nothing? I Nothing. Well, Nothing. Let, let, let's call it a night. I think that's successful. Um, right. I want to I thank all of our amazing panelists for another great show. Um Thanks very much to uh, Dr. Evan Fusco. Evan, any shout outs this week? Besides uh, your referral code? Right there. That, yeah, yeah. My, my, my code, I'll keep talking like this so that my face stays on the thing. And yeah, <laughs> you know, so if you're going to buy one, buy one. Yeah, current referral period ends June 15th. So we don't really know what's going to happen uh, after that. So there's only a, a few weeks, well, I guess four weeks almost left um, in the current referral period. So we'll see what they offer up next. There you yeah. go. Evan4452, just in case, ts.la slash Evan4452. Or just give him my name and, and they'll know who he is. Yeah. Oh, that guy. <laughs> well, speaking of that guy, Tony. Um, hey, everybody. Yeah, I just kind of freaked out a little bit because I just did something really crazy oh, and weird on my Get ready um, to cut his camera <laughs> <laughs> i have I, I i literally have no idea what i just did to my my window and that kind of scared me but i'm back okay <laughs> I, I i'm just glad it didn't involve your pants so right please. right right no yeah good to be here and uh that's it glad i could make it this week as always mr schaefer a pleasure and mr coglin um, I have survived barely, but, uh, I would like to, uh, uh, ask people to follow our Twitter account at the Tesla life and our Facebook account at the Tesla life and the numeral one altogether. So please follow us on Facebook and Twitter. If uh, you want to hear more. Absolutely. And follow us here every week. We're here every Wednesday night, eh, seven ish, but you know, new shows every Wednesday is all you really need to know. New shows every Wednesday. Um, I want to thank, as always, Lee Moon for our amazing theme music. He uh, let us uses it for free, use it for free every week. So thank you, Lee. Um, thank you, Mark. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Evan. Another fantastic show's in the can. We'll see you next week for more on The Tesla Life. And